Good morning. morning. Welcome to 2022. Happy New Year to you all. So how was it? Quiet. Quiet. (laughs) Warm. It's been the mildest New Year on record, which is quite strange in many ways. So can I congratulate all of you on being here this morning? Well done. And all those who will watch online as well, I put, up, put these on for the last few, the last time of our, of our time of Advent and Christmas. Welcome to our service this morning. Welcome to Gordon Armour, who's playing the organ for us this morning. And um, welcome to all who will be watching online. On this, the first Sunday of the new year, the second Sunday of Christmas, we cheer with our gathering song, which is, Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. a few moments just wave good morning to each other from afar <laughs> the intimations are quite straightforward at the moment so and for today the service next sunday uh, we revert back to usual times so it'll be 10 o'clock for old guru Ashton and then 11 o'clock for st ninians but not here it will be at the and i keep on getting this name the meadowfield center what? See, I was halfway there, wasn't I? It's Meadow Lark Centre, so we'll be meeting up at the Meadow Lark Centre at half eleven. Um, same time as normal, but just a different venue. Um, and that will be from ongoing from that point onwards. So that's back to 10 o'clock here, and then 11.30 at Meadow Lark. Sounds lovely. It really does. It's such a nice name, Meadow Lark. Um, the... The church halls here are going to be closed for organisations. Jim has put out an an email to all organisational leaders to this effect until at least the 18th of January. In light of current guidelines from Scottish Government and also guidelines being sent to us from 121, we feel that we've had no option but to make this decision. We will continue with with services here in in this place uh, as we... There certainly is no reason for that not to take place. But um, we're expecting a further update on the 18th of January. We are not expecting this situation to be a long-term one. Um, So hopefully that will be the case. But we will let you know as soon as we know more. But unfortunately for our organisations, it will need to be a delayed start back into 2022. We do apologise, but it's beyond our control. Also today, in our prayers of intercession, um, I, I know of three people, uh, and probably a lot more that are known to you, but three people in particular who, have, uh, who are currently hospitalized from our congregation. Uh, Maureen Young, whose husband just passed away just a few weeks ago, John, um, and Margaret Howison is in a, not in a good, uh, difficult time as well, and also Bryce Reed, who has fallen and broken his hip. So we remember them in our thoughts and prayers, but also the families of Hazel Gallagher of 29 Larkfield Road. Remember Ian and her son Stephen, whose funeral will take, here, take place here on the 11th of January, and Agnes Davison of 17 Essex Road, whose funeral I will be conducting on the 13th of January. We remember their families in our prayers of intercession. These are all the intimations. Let us come before God in our worship and in our praise. We 
have this Sunday the last few times to sing a few of the carols before we put them away again for next year. So let us sing together hymn 323, hymn 323, the first Noel.
I remember days going by, going around carol singing around the parish, and always when we decided we sang the first Noel, it always seemed like a good idea until you realised there were six verses. <laughs> and by the six, you were starting to wane, quite dramatically so. Well done in perseverance. Congratulations. We're going to turn and read from the scriptures this morning. First of all, from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. This is the commission of the prophet Isaiah. A very famous piece indeed. Um, And I know know it uh, it says uh, 1 to 6, but it should actually be 1 to to 8. So I do apologize, Margaret. It's 1 to 8. Sorry about that. Um, uh, my fault. But this is the great commission of the prophet Isaiah. And why we're reading this on this Sunday of the second Sunday of Christmas? Well, hopefully it'll become obvious by the end of the service. Let's hear together as we share in these words, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Isaiah's commission. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the chain of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, This has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Amen. Let us take a moment to come before God in our prayers. Let's unite our hearts. Let us pray. Holy and loving Father, as we share in the reality and wonder of Christmas and the advent of a new year, we think of these four themes of hope, peace, love, and joy. How we have experienced these things in the last few weeks. The hope of meeting together and sharing the hope of better news for all peace in our world, peace in our lives, joy, joy completely unlimited in all that we share in with our family and friends, joy in coming together and meeting together in person or digitally, and all that driven by love. These four great things, Lord, these four important parts of our lives Now the difficult bit starts as we move away from this time of Christmas, as we move into the reality of the year ahead, into the unknown, we need these things to be alive in our hearts and in our lives, that we may travel on into this new year with that sense of hope alive and real for us, hope for our own situations, Hope for the lives of many others that we know. Hope for our nation and for our world. That peace may indeed be in every heart. Peace may be real in every place. Joy in the midst of all despair. Joy that really fills our lives. And all through love. Love that we know through one another and the experiences that we share with one another, but also the love that you have shown us, Lord God, through the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through his journey and ministry. 
the love that we know through the power of the Holy Spirit breathing as part of our lives. We journey through the reality of Christmas and we journey now into this new year as we know too that spring is just around the corner, the dark night soon put to flight. As we remember the living light of Jesus Christ, the light that the world has never extinguished, we come to thank you that we live in that light, that we are guided by that light, and that that light shines among us and through us. Lord, help us to be the means by which other people see the light. By living our faith, by sharing our faith, by witnessing our faith. Holy and loving Father, draw near to us today, we pray. Be with us in our own journeys, and our own experiences, in our own imperfections and failings. As we come to you, we seek that knowledge of forgiveness, that knowledge of new beginnings, that knowledge of new hope. We recognize our failings before you, Lord, the things we've done and wish we hadn't, the things we know we should have done, the words said in anger that we wish we could take back but can't. Lord, we come to you for that sense of release, Release from all that binds us. Release from all that worries us. Release from all that defines us. Release into your love. Release into your eternal grace. Hear our prayers this day. Be with us, we ask. And as we journey into this unknown of 2022, we pray, Lord, that you may indeed journey with us every moment of every day. Father, hear these are prayers we ask. In Jesus' name, we, we bring them to you. Amen. We turn and read from our final part of the Christmas narrative, the epiphanal reading of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now, technically, epiphany is not till the 6th, that's Thursday, so we're jumping ahead a wee bit, but forgive me. Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 2 and verses 1 to 12. And again, Margaret will lead us in the last part of our Christmas narrative. The visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their Excuse me, they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. 
Thanks be to God for these reading from his holy word, and to his name be all the praise and the glory. We sing together from CH4, hymn 326, As with Gladness, Men of Old. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, how has it been for you this year? It's been a different Christmas, I suspect, again, from what we perhaps were normal, or at least were used to. Certainly better than what it was last year, compared to the COVID year of last year, although this is still a COVID year. Still not what we were used to. I think every family has its own traditions, ways of doing things at Christmas and New Year. You know, the things that you always like to do, like make sure the tree is put up on a particular day or time, that certain ornaments adorn the tree, that certain, thing ha- certain things happen. And of course, at New Year, that you have the, all, the yearly complaint, the TV's never as good as it used to be. <laughs> or is that just our household? I don't know. It could be general. It is always that sign of moving on. The idea when we reach beyond Christmas, I think some people just want everything away as quickly as possible. Other people want to cling to it as long as they possibly can. You know the sort of what person I'm talking about, whoever had their tree up before Remembrance Sunday and might not take it down until at least January or February. Doesn't really matter what category you fit into if you've already put your decorations away. It's entirely understandable. 
we move on, we move on from Christmas so quickly. And even just yesterday, Sean and I were, were driving up to Paisley for a family get together last night. And last Christmas came on, you know, the Wham song last Christmas, and it felt wrong. <laughs> it felt so wrong already. It was the equivalent of hearing Slade singing Merry Christmas, everyone, just after Boxing Day. It just feels wrong. And yet, within the context of the narrative of Christmas, we have to continue the story because it doesn't all happen in the, the friendly way we look at it of the shepherds and then the wise men coming to the manger. If you read Matthew's gospel clearly, the timing is different. Bethlehem is still the place where it happens, but they talk about a house. There's no mention of a stable. So there are different elements to Matthew's gospel in the Christmas narrative. And of course, we have the Magi bearing their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I decided that this is the last week of our blow-up nativity <laughs> because it is epiphanal. Um, really, I think I said when I first used it that this was, um, I, th I thought this was Joseph or, or Poet. I think this is, jo or a shepherd. And there's no Joseph that Joseph was away making other arrangements <laughs> or possibly making the dinner, I don't know. But realistically, this is Joseph. Mary and Joseph and the wise men, it is an epiphanal nativity scene in that sense. Indeed, uh, a few years ago, Karen Harbison and I went to uh, Costco for some supplies, and we both ended up buying the same nativity set. And just, that's two ministers, right? And it wasn't until we both got home that we realized there were no shepherds in it. <laughs> it was purely epiphanal, purely the wise men. And the epiphany is important. We downplay it, but for the Greek Orthodox tradition, it is the epiphany that becomes the most important of all. The coming of the wise men, the guiding by the star, because it is going from internal story to an external story. This is where the gospel explodes out the way after the story of the wise men. And as we move on from Christmas, as we move on from the time of celebration, we have to understand what we're doing, what we need to do. And so as we start to take the decorations down, yesterday as we came into our driveway, we were talking to our neighbours who were already taking their outside lights away. And I, I kind of cannot really, yeah, kind of really depresses me because there's something wonderful in the midst of the darkness when you see the lights appearing in people's houses, isn't it? And then suddenly they go away and you're back in, it's still dark. It's not as dark, but it still is dark. And it feels there's something missing. But we're taking the man's ones away as well. Actually, the way they are on our pathway, it looks like a landing strip. And we are fearful of a passing jet. But we take our decorations down. Next Sunday, the Christmas tree will be down. That's a subtle hint, Elmer, by the way. The Christmas, tree will be, the Christmas tree will be away and all our decorations will be gone. And even, well, even our nativity, our wonderful blow-up nativity for this year, well, how you feel at the end of Christmas. You feel deflated. And yet, it's not how we should be feeling. We should be feeling really up and buoyant because what we go on to do is now to live with hope and peace and love and joy. The challenge we face with Christmas is to take these principles these important things that are illuminated during the Advent and are brought to life in the light of Christ, we need to take these symbols, these realities, into the reality of 2022, into the journey of our lives, and into the journeys of others as well. Isaiah, the great call of Isaiah, 
where he sees the seraphim flying around and the voice of God is heard, who shall I send or whom shall I send to be proper? Send me. You know that wee guy in the class who always goes going, "Mm." (laughs) there's a strange thing which we do with children in primary schools, I've told you before, when their hand goes up, it seems to be attached to their vocal cords. Mm. Maybe it was you in school. Maybe you were like that. You were the one who was going, mm. Send me, says Isaiah. But the challenge of Christmas is for us to, while we feel the deflation, and it is a sad sight, is it not? As we feel the deflation of the end of the season, of the lights going away, the decorations being packed up for another year, it is inherent in us to maintain that sense of wonder, that sense of awe, that sense of light, even in the midst of darkness. And that through our life of faith, through our journey of faith, individually and collectively as a congregation, to show and to live through hope and peace and love and joy. We pack the decorations away. We put everything away for next year once more, hopefully carefully, because you don't want to buy lights again next year, do you? But we live with these realities. We live through the light of the living Christ. We live to share that sense of hope and peace and love and joy. So as the lights go off, the decorations go away, And as all these things happen, we maintain the sense of wonder. We maintain the sense of awe and wonder that Christmas has brought. That sense of joy, that sense of togetherness, that sense that something is different. And we seek to live our lives through the wonder of faith, through the wonder of Christmas, through the light of Christmas, to live with hope in all that is ahead of us, to know that sense of peace in our lives and the lives of all whom we love, to share that love with one and another, the love that we've known, not just at Christmas, but every day, and through all these things, to bring joy Because at the end of the day, while all the other ephemeral stuff disappears, while all the other pieces are taken away, while everything else goes, the one thing that remains is the light. That God loved this world, our world, and us so much that he sent the living Christ into this world that we might know the wonder of his love. So as we move from this period of Christmas and New Year of joy and celebration into the apparent time of deflation and almost a sense of loss, the challenge for us is not to feel that way, but the challenge for us is to live as the people of the light, like Isaiah, responding to the call of living our lives in the wonder of Christmas that all may know through us, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the outpouring of light and love through God, the very basis of what Christmas is. Hope come to life. Peace in our lives and the life of the world. Joy. Joy uncontained all through love. May the wonder of Christmas burn brightly in your heart through the whole of this year. And may you continue to live and share as the people of God. We're going to sing a hymn that reminds us of our journey's past And the fact that through the whole of our experiences of life, so God is with us. 
from CH4, hymn 161, O God, our help in ages past. So let us come before God in a time of prayer for others and intercession, our prayers of intercession, in which we'll also share in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we come before God. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. God of the past, God of the present, God of the future, you, O oh Lord, are in all time, and all time is in you. We come to thank you for this time of celebration this time of sharing together, this time that we know as Christmas and New Year. We all have our own traditions, Lord, our own way of things that we like to do. Maybe they change. Sometimes they have to. Certainly last year we know that's the case. But we still like what we're used to, what we know. And we thank you, Father, for the opportunity of sharing, particularly with family and friends at this Christmas time. Also, the wonders of technology that have allowed us to communicate with one another digitally across many thousands of miles. We thank you for that sense of closeness that we can achieve. But as we come today... As we come on this, the first Sunday of 2022, as we gather on this first day, the second day of a new year, we're aware too of the journey ahead of us, as well of the journey that we've come through. We offer our prayers, O oh Lord, for a world that still cries out in great need. As we enter into 2022, so our thoughts and prayers are still with those who live in difficult situations, who are struggling to survive in the reality of the onslaught of, of, of life itself. We offer our prayers today 
for those in greatest need throughout the world. We remember especially all those in the Ukraine living in the great uncertainty of the threat of the, that is upon them, almost like pawns in a game. We remember too those in Hong Kong and the diminishing rights and freedoms that they have. We pray for those caught up in natural disasters of wildfires in Colorado, of earthquake and other phenomena that we see right, out, right around the world. The stories we've heard in 2021, the number of lives changed so dramatically. Lord, for all these situations, we bring them to you and we pray for peace. That, that we seek to proclaim through the Christmas narrative, we pray for reality in the needs of our world. Peace in all areas. A coming together of people. A recognition of the common bonds of humanity that should bind us rather than divide us. May we see in one another that we are brothers and sisters through Jesus Christ. May we see in each other that reality of love rather than looking for differences. We thank you, Father, for who we are and what we are and all that we've been blessed with through the past. We thank you for families and for friends. We thank you for this world and this society in which we live. We remember all those who are in power in different forms and who help to shape our world, our society, and we pray that you may guide them wisely. Within our area, we pray for all those within Inverclyde Council, in the Scottish Parliament, in the National Parliament. We remember our Queen, the Royal Family. We pray, Father, for all who are part of our institutions. We remember today all within our emergency services. Those who have been there through the dark nights of winter and also through the light nights of summer. We pray for all within our National Health Service working so hard at this time, our police and fire services, those willing to put themselves in the line. And we remember too those in the Coast Guard and in the lifeboats. We remember too in this time of our teachers preparing to go back to teach our young, our young people of schools returning to term again of our universities and colleges and our young people in the uncertainty that's ahead. Father, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers for all that lies ahead, that whatever we face, we may know that we do not face it alone, but that you are with us. Hear our prayers, Lord, that we may indeed know that you are there, that you are beside us, in front of us, behind us, above us, below us. Lord, you are there for us. But we pray while you are there for us, you are there for all your children. We remember especially those who are going through difficult times and that we know about emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever situation they are in, we pray for them, Lord. We remember those who are ill either at home or in hospital, we remember especially Bryce and Margaret and Maureen today. Grant your love and peace to be in their hearts and in their families and all who worry about them. We remember too those who have lost a loved one and struggle with that reality of bereavement. We pray today for the families of Hazel Gallagher and Agnes Davidson. We commend them to you and ask your peace to be upon them May they know your grace in the midst of their pain. Lord, in a moment of silence, we remember and bring to before you our families and friends, all who we wish to remember. And in this time, we ask that you may hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, 
you came into this world to be the light that the world can never extinguish. May your light shine through us and this place. May all who know us know you through the living of our lives. And may for us the wonder and joy of Christmas may be, remain real to us in all that lies ahead. Father, as a family now, we share in the words that you taught us to say together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Can I thank you for being here today and sharing with us and all those who will share online as well. One can only hope that one new tradition that is not a continuing tradition is the need to have a lateral flow test before you come out of the house every time. And we can only hope that the great joy of receiving a present next year is not a pack of flow tests. We look forward with faith. Oh, what a, hit, what a nice link. As we come to share our final hymn of this morning, hymn number 300, 237, look forward in faith. And then we are following the benediction, we'll sing, we are marching in the light of God. Hymn 237. <laughs> into the unknown of 2022 knowing that you are loved and blessed by God go now into the unknown of 2022 to allow the light of Christ to shine through you that others may see and know the truth go now into the unknown of 2022 in the blessing and wonder of God and may the peace and joy of God be upon you and all whom you love and share your journey with May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love and all who share in your story now and indeed forevermore. <laughs> Oh, 
Can I just say I'm so glad that none of you felt the need to go down to Carlisle to celebrate New Year. <laughs> we are marching in the light of God. Friends, go in peace and thank you for being you.